Hi students, welcome back to Zoology class. In the last video, we have seen about origin and evolution of life. Two topics we have seen. Today, the rest of the topics we are going to see. Let's enter into the first topic. Theories of evolution. Theories of evolution. First, let's see what is evolution. Evolution is the gradual change occurring in living organisms over a period of time. Evolution is the gradual change occurring in living organisms over a period of time. Formation of new species due to changes in specific characters over several generations as a response to natural selection is called evolution. So, this natural changes are explained through the theories of evolution by Lamarck and Darwin. So, first we are going to see the Lamarckism. So, the Lamarckism theory was proposed by Jean Baptist Lamarck. Jean Baptist Lamarck. Jean Baptist Lamarck was a French naturalist well known for his theory of evolution. Lamarck's theory of evolution was published in Philosophic Zoologic in the year 1809. So, his theory of evolution was published in Philosophic Zoologic. The name of the book is Philosophic Zoologic and the year also 1809. This is the book of Lamarck, Philosophy Zoologic. This book is popularly known as Theory of Inheritance of Occurred Characters or use and disuse theory or Lamarckism. So, what are the three names? Theory of inheritance of occurred characters or use and disuse theory or Lamarckism. Principles of Lamarckism. Principles of Lamarckism. So, the first principle is internal vital force internal vital force. Living organisms or their component parts tend to increase in size continuously. So, all the uh, living organisms or the parts of the organisms tend to increase in size continuously. This increase in size is due to the inherent ability of the organism. So, this increase in size, increase in size is due to the or because of the inherent ability of the organisms. Now, you see in this diagram, horse diagram is it. So, this is a modern horse. Nowadays, when uh, we are seeing only this modern horse. Yes, so this modern horse is evolved from Fleohippus. Fleohippus. The Fleohippus horse is evolved from Merichippus. The Merichippus horse is evolved from Oligohippus. Oligohippus horse is evolved from Eohippus. So when we see the first picture, Eohippus, the horse is small. So in the next generation, the horse is little more big. Next, little more. So, now the horse is big in size. So, because of the evolution only, now the size increased. So, from the beginning, small in size, at last the size is big. So, because of the evolution, uh, the size increased. Environment and new needs. A change in the environment brings about changes in the need of the organisms. If there is a change in the environment, the particular organisms also need a change. In response to the changing environment, the organisms develop certain adaptive characters. Because of the changes in the environment, the organisms develop cert certain adaptive characters in their body. The adaptations of the organisms may be in the form of development of new parts of the body. Sometimes the adaptations are uh, new parts of the body also arises or sometimes the particular organ may grow in larger size. For example, giraffe. Once upon a time, giraffes were there. Uh, in those giraffes were too tall. Nowadays, modern giraffes also there. So, these giraffes are too tall because on those days, uh, foods are available. Foods were available. But nowadays, uh, there is a scarcity of the food because of the continuous stretching of the neck. Uh, the, these giraffes got tall neck as well as tall legs. Use and disuse theory. Use and disuse theory. If an organ is used constantly, the organ develops well and gets strengthened. So, when we are using the organ continuously, the organ develops well and gets strengthened. Example, see this uh, picture. So, he is a wrestler. Continuously, he was exercising. Because of the exercise, he got the six-pack body. 
is it so because of the exercise only his muscles strengthened and uh, got good development when an organ is not used for a long time it gradually degenerates so when we are not using a organ for a long time the organ must be gradually degenerates example kiwi bud so once upon a time this kiwi bud was uh, not using the uh, wings because of that the wings degenerates gradually degenerates the ancestors of giraffe had a short neck and short forelimbs ancestors of giraffe once upon a time giraffes were there so the, those giraffes had short neck and short forelimbs due to shortage of grass they were forced to feed on leaves from trees so because of the shortage of the grass these giraffes were forced to feed uh, feed on grass or uh, uh, feed on leaves from the tall trees so the continuous stretching of their neck and forelimbs resulted in the development of long neck and long forelimbs so because of the continuous stretching the giraffe got long neck as well as long forelimbs so this one uh, organ is used constantly the organ develops well uh, and gets strengthened so the degenerated wing of kiwi that is example for when an organ is not used for a long time it gradually degenerates the fourth principle is theory of inheritance of acquired characters theory of inheritance of acquired characters when the environment changes the animals develop adaptive structures if there is a change in the environment the animals develop adapt adaptive structures to survive in the environment the characters developed by the animals during their lifetime in response to the environmental changes are called acquired characters for example giraffe now we have discussed about the giraffe so because of the scarcity of the grass uh, the giraffe uh, was continuously stretching their neck so that it got the long neck so that character is called what acquired character yes the acquired characters are transmitted to the offspring by the process of inheritance so this acquired character are transmitted to the offspring by the process of inheritance so that character is transmitted uh, from uh, the parent to the next generation understand children the character is transmitted to the offspring by the process of inheritance that means uh, through the uh, next generation uh, th from the particular parent to the next generation it can be transmitted theory of natural selection theory of natural selection this natural selection theory was proposed by charles robert darwin or charles darwin charles darwin was one of the great naturalist and philosopher of 18th century he was born in england in 1809 while studying in college th college through his friendship with professor j s henslow he was fascinated towards nature while studying in college at england he got a friendship with professor botany professor j s henslow because of that he became familiar with botany at that time the british admirably planned a voyage of exploration for 5 years on a ship named hms beagle around south america he traveled in a ship named hms beagle for 5 years as a naturalist dr henslow was asked to nominate a young naturalist for the voyage darwin was given the opportunity during his 5 years voyage he visited many parts of the world a number of islands including the galapagos island and pacific island so he visited south america galapagos island and pacific island and other places also darwin made elaborate observations on nature of the land plants and animals of the regions he visited so what are the regions he has visited uh, in that particular regions plant animals uh, then uh, land everything he has observed he further worked for a period of 20 years to develop the theory of natural selection after that 20 years he has uh, developed for the he has worked for the development of the theory of natural selection Darwin published his observations and conclusions under the name of origin uh, under the name origin of species in 1859 so the book of darwin demonstrate the fact of evolution 
uh, this book elaborates on the theory of natural selection for evolutionary transformation the origin of species that book elaborates on the theory of natural selection for evolutionary transformation principles of darwinism first point is overproduction overproduction living beings have the ability to reproduce more individuals and form their own progeny so all the living beings have the ability to produce their young ones they multiply in a geometrical manner example elephant elephant's life span is 90 years after 40 years only it can start to produce young ones in his in the elephant's life span it can produce six young ones it can produce six young ones so when we are not disturbing the elephants 750 years when we are not disturbing the elephants it can produce 19 million elephants it can produce 19 million elephants so all the organisms have the capacity to produce next generation this leads to over production all the organisms have the capacity to produce next generation this leads to over production struggle for existence the population increases in a geometrical ratio population increases in a uncountable manner but space and food for the organism remain same but the shelter as well as the food for the organism remain same there is a shortage in the food this leads to competition in uh, which is called struggle for existence the shortage in the space and food leads to competition that is known as struggle for existence it is uh, it is of three types three types of struggles uh, struggle for existence are there that is intra specific struggle inter specific struggle and environmental struggle first one is intra specific struggle intra specific struggle intra specific struggle means competition among the individuals of same species competition among the individuals of same species here deer so both the deer belongs to same species here also kangaroo belongs to same species so uh, both the kangaroos are fighting for food or something so competition among the individuals of same species that is known as intra specific struggle second one inter specific struggle inter specific struggle competition between the organisms of different species living together different species so here lion and tiger both belongs to different species so they are fighting for what purpose maybe food or shelter or some other purpose so this is known as inter specific struggle third one environmental struggle environmental struggle natural conditions like extreme heat or cold drought and floods can affect the existence of organisms so natural conditions affect the living conditions of organisms example heat or cold and drought and floods so these are the natural conditions affect the existence of organisms third one variations the occurrence of variation is a characteristic feature of all plants and animals so the changes are very very important for all the plants and animals small variations are important for evolution so only the small variants variations are very very important for the evolution favorable variations are useful to the organism favorable variations so what are the variations are essential only those variations are known as favorable variations so the, these favorable variations are useful to the organism unfavorable variations are ha- harmful or useless to the organism for example uh, drought flood uh, too hot or too cold these are unfavorable variations so these variations are harmful or useless to the organisms the fourth principle is survival of the fittest survival of the fittest all organism face the struggle for existence so all the organism face the struggle what are the struggle heat cold drought or flood the organism provided with favorable variations succeed in it so some of the organisms only succeeded in this struggle these organisms are fit for survival so only those organisms are fit for surviving in the uh, environment 
other animals are unfit to survive and they perish so remaining organisms they are unfit they cannot survive in the environment the process of selection of organisms with favorable variation is uh, called as natural selection so the process of selection of organisms with favorable variations so which are the organisms can survive uh, in this environment okay only some of the organisms only can survive in the environment so that with favorable variation so that favorable variations is called as natural selection the last principle is origin of species origin of species new species originates by the gradual accumulation of favorable variations for a number of generations new species originates new species arises by the gradual accumulation not sudden accumulation gradual slow accumulation of favorable variations for a number of generation generation to the next generation one generation to the next generation then it passes on to the next generation like that so number of generations variation variation is the difference found among the individuals of the same species and the offspring of the same parent it is the difference found among the individuals of the same species now you see this diagram whether all the persons are same no totally different okay we can we can find out the variations easily so it is the difference found among the individuals of the same species and the offspring of the same parent it is a raw material of evolution it is the basic material this variation is the basic material of evolution what is evolution evolution is the gradual change occurring in living organisms over a period of time evolution is the gradual change occurring in living organisms over a period of time without variation there is no evolution if there is no variation there is no evolution types of variations so first variation is known as somatic variations somatic variations they affect the body cells of the organisms so this variations affect only the body cells body cells or somatic cells they are not inheritable this characters cannot be transmitted from one generation to the next generation they occur due to the environmental factors based on the environmental factors only these variations occur in the uh, person's body so see this diagram this parents basically they were a uh, white so continuously they were worked under the sunlight because of the continuous sunlight their skin color changed into black but their ch their child so this child got white in color so because uh, because uh, this characters this color skin color cannot transmitted from one generation to the next generation so second one this person because of the continuous practice he got the six pack body so he is a wrestler he got the six pack bodies but, uh, but this uh, bo uh, this body character cannot transmitted from the next next generation okay so these are somatic variations they occur due to the environmental factors this characters cannot be transmitted from one generation to the next generation germinal variations germinal variations they are produced in germ cells of an organism these variations are produced in germ cells of an organism what's meant by germ cells they are reproductive cells in male that is the uh, sperm and female it is the ova is it so these are germ cells so they are produced in germ cells of an organism they are inherited so these characters are inherited transmitted from one generation to the next generation they may be present in ancestors or may occur suddenly so these characters this variations present in ancestors and so ancestors meaning our forerunners okay so these uh, variations present in ancestors or may occur suddenly some occasions it may occur suddenly see this uh, diagram so uh, homo habilis here homo erectus this is homo sapiens so here on the uh, body on the face body totally has are present here somewhat different so some variations may occur in this homo erectus body but here human being modern human being homo sapiens there is no hair on the body so variations occur so these are the germinal variations so they are produced in germ cells of an organism they are inherited they may be present in ancestors or may occur suddenly 
the germinal variation is divided into two types first one is continuous variation or fluctuation variation number two discontinuous variation first let's see continuous variation or fluctuation variations intermediate form is available these variations are small variations slight variations are there they occur among individuals of a population so these variations occur within a population they occur by gradual accumulation in a population gradual uh, accumulation is present in the population example skin color height and weight of an individual color of eye etc see this picture this is the skin color is this skin example of skin color so in the uh, one pop just you imagine uh, this is a population so first person uh, the, the skin the color of skin is what pure white okay so last person's uh, skin color is black in between different colors are there different colors are there so small variations arises so next uh, second person or second generation slightly changes are present then third little more changes so like that small small changes uh, occur okay so they occur by gradual accumulation in a population so in between intermediate form is available these are the intermediate form so first person uh, first person and the last person in between intermediate forms are present so these are small variation so this variation is continuous so this is known as continuous variation or flux situation variation one more example height and weight of an individual here the first person's height is 5.5 inch last person height is 6.4 inch in between intermediate form is available okay so uh, these persons show different height and weight so these are intermediate forms so these are small variations so small variations discontinuous variation they occur suddenly in an organism due to mutations so these variations occur suddenly in an organism due to mutations mutation meaning changes in the dna or there is an error in the dna they do not have any intermediate forms so these variations there these variations don't have any intermediate forms the previous one that is continuous variation so the continuous variation uh, have a lot of intermediate forms but here there is no intermediate forms these large variations are not useful for evolution so this is a large variation but these variations are not useful for evolution only the continuous variation is useful for evolution example short legged and can sheep six or more digits in human etc digits meaning fingers so this is a sheep so this sheep produce the next generation sheep because in this sheep uh, the dna level there is a change because of the change in the dna the next generation sheep are very very uh, the sheep are having short legs so these sheep are known as ancon sheep so this is the large variations changes occur in the dna level okay so this is the discontinuous variation but this discontinuous various variations are not useful for evolution textbook evaluation roman number 1 choose the correct answer question number 1 biogenetic law states that option a antogeny and phylogeny go together b antogeny recapitulates phylogeny c phylogeny recapitulates antogeny d there is no relationship between phylogeny and antogeny correct answer is b antogeny recapitulates phylogeny Question number 2 the use and disuse theory was proposed by A Charles Darwin B Ernst Haeckel C Jean Baptiste Lamarck D Gregor Mendel correct answer Jean Baptiste Lamarck Number 3 paleontologist deals with A embryological evidences B fossil evidences C vestigial organ evidences D all the above correct answer is fossil evidences fossil evidences Roman number 2 fill in the blanks Number 1 the characters developed by the animals during their lifetime in response to the changes are called dash answer is acquired characters acquired characters Number 2 the degenerated and non functional organs found in an organism are called dash vestigial organ vestigial organ 
Number 3. The four limb of bat and human are examples of dash organs. Homologous organs. Homologous organs. Number 4. The theory of natural selection for evolution was proposed by dash Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin. Then Roman number 3. State true or false. Correct the false statements. Question number 1. The use and disuse theory of organs was postulated by Charles Darwin. Answer is false. Correct answer Lamarck. Strike out the word Charles Darwin and write Lamarck. Number 2. The homologous organs look similar and perform similar functions but they have different origin and developmental pattern. Answer is false. Correct answer analogous organs. Question number 3. Bats have evolved from reptiles. Answer true. Roman number 4 match the following. Here I have given the correct answers. So have to write correctly. Atavism, rudimentary tail and thick hair on the body. Vestigial organs, caudal vertebrae and vermiform appendix. Analogous organs, a wing of a bat and a wing of an insect. Homologous organs, a forelimb of a cat and a bat's wing. Next, Roman number 4, short answer questions. Question number 1. The degenerated wing of a kiwi is an acquired character. Why is it an acquired character? Answer, page number 277. 277. So, what are the points I am reading? Only how to mark that uh, points. Okay, page number 277. Right side. Theory of inheritance of acquired characters. That fourth uh, point, that paragraph, first line, first point. When there is a change in the environment, the animals respond to the change. Second point, they develop adaptive structures. The characters developed by the animals during their lifetime in response to the environmental changes are called acquired characters. Then third point, same page, left side, uh, number 3, use and disuse theory, that paragraph. Third point, Lamarck's use and disuse theory states that if an organ is used constantly, the organ develops well and gets strengthened. When an organ is not used for a long time, it gradually degenerates. Then fourth point, same page, right side, first paragraph, fifth line. The degenerated wing of uh, kiwi is an example for organ of disuse. Then Roman number 7, long answer, uh, long answer questions. Question number 1, natural selection is a driving force for evolution. How? Answer page number 278 and 79. 278 and 279. Here uh, left side, page number 278, left side, principles of Darwinism. In that heading, near to that, one sentence how to write. Let me read the sentence how to write it uh, fast. The principles of Darwinism tells that natural selection is a driving force for evolution. Once again I repeat. The principles of Darwinism tells that natural selection is a driving force for evolution. After that, principles of Darwinism uh, start from that heading. Then, overproduction, struggle for existence, all the paragraphs have to mark it. Then, third paragraph, variations. Fourth paragraph, survival of the fittest or natural selection. Fifth, para fifth point, origin of species. So, till that, how to mark that answer. So, these are the answers for today's study portion, how to learn thoroughly.